As with every year, it's been a tough one for losing former United players and staff. So here's a tribute to those who passed away in 2023. Former United keeper Mike Pinner passed away last May. Whilst he's not a big name and played much of his career as an amateur, he did play in four matches for United after his move from QPR in 1961, all of them coming in that year. He had moved to Chelsea by that October and in his career additionally collected 52 amateur England caps and turned out for Team GB in the 1956 and 1960 Olympic Games, making three appearances. Mike Pinner died on the 2nd of May, aged 89, after a life well lived. In June, we lost a very popular ex-United defender and an FA Cup winner, Gordon McQueen. The Scotsman had built up a solid reputation with Leeds during the 70s before he left that moribund side to join Dave Sexton's United in 1978. He scored in the 1979 Cup Final and played in the 1983 FA Cup Final victory over Brighton. He left Old Trafford in 1985 after playing 229 games, scoring 26 times from centre-back, one of the most prolific scoring defenders in our history. Gordon also won 30 Scotland caps, scoring five goals. Also, he's well known for this memorable quote of his. Ask all the players in the country which club they'd like to play for, and 99% would say Manchester United. The other 1% are liars. In 2011, Gordon was diagnosed with throat cancer, which he beat, but in 2021, it was announced he had vascular dementia, the curse of many footballers, and it was this disease that took his life on the 15th of June, 2023. Gordon left behind a wife, Yvonne, and three children, as well as three grandchildren. In July, we lost one of our current non-playing staff. A senior scout, Dane, Tommy Muller-Nielsen, died suddenly aged 61. After a long list of previous roles, including time at Rangers in Aberdeen, north of the border, Tommy became a scout for United in 2016, helping bring, amongst others, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Christian Eriksen to the club. He was also the son of Danish managerial legend Richard Muller-Nielsen, who masterminded the Danes' Euro 1992 victory and passed away nine years ago. Tommy leaves behind a wife and other family members. Former United fullback Bobby Noble passed on the 22nd of August this year, aged 77. The Stockportian had tremendous potential, joining United as an apprentice in 1961. He made his debut in 66 and won a championship medal that year after playing 31 matches. However, his career was dashed due to tragedy as he was involved in a car crash just before the end of that season. Despite recovering from his injuries, he couldn't quite get back to full fitness and retired while still on United's books in 1970, aged just 24. He could have been a mainstay for us for the whole of the decade had things gone differently. Bobby succumbed to vascular dementia and left behind a wife and son and joined his other son Grant who was killed in 1994. In September we lost another memorable Red, the original Pancho, Mark Pearson, who passed away on the 2nd of September, a month before his 84th birthday. Born in Ridgeway, Derbyshire, Mark signed as a trainee in 1955, joining the first team squad as an inside forward two years later. He made his debut aged 18 in the first match after Munich, a 3-0 FA Cup win over Sheffield Wednesday. Mark would be a regular till the end of that season, but missed out on the FA Cup final defeat to Bolton. Mark was nicknamed Pancho due to his sideburns and Mexican appearance, and would play 80 matches over the next six years, scoring 14 goals. He left Old Trafford for the club he made his debut against Sheffield Wednesday, but was forced to retire aged just 29. Mark Pearson is survived by his wife Susan and two daughters. A loss that was felt around the planet by the whole football world was the passing of an undoubted legend of the game, as well as our beloved club, Sir Bobby Charlton, who left us in October. Born in Northumberland, Sir Bobby joined United in 1953 as a trainee, attracted to Old Trafford by the promise Sir Matt Busby made to young players of supreme talent that they would be given first-team opportunities. That said, the Geordie had to wait three years, five days before his 19th birthday, to make his debut on October the 6th, 1956, where he scored a brace in a 4-2 victory over Charlton. From then on, the young Bobby was a regular in the first team. He picked up his first league title that season and an FA Cup runners-up medal, but the following year would tear his world apart. In February 1958, Charlton was one of the survivors of the Munich air disaster that claimed the lives of so many of his talented teammates and friends. Despite this adversity, he would cement himself in the folklore of English, European and world football. Winning an FA Cup in 1963, he went on to win two more league titles, two charity shields, a World Cup for England in 66 and a Ballon d'Or to go with it that year, and then lifted the European Cup in Dennis Law's absence in 1968, becoming club captain in his own right from that point till his de facto retirement in 1973, after 758 matches and 249 goals for us. He also finished his England career after 106 matches and 49 goals. Both appearance and goal-scoring feats were records at the time. 
After a brief spelling club management, he became a director at United in Knight of the Realm in 1994. So Bobby could be seen at almost every United game accompanied by his wife, Lady Norma, until he was diagnosed with dementia in 2020 and as a result withdrew from public life. It was this accursed disease that claimed his life three years later on the 21st of October 2023 and 10 days after his 86th birthday. So Bobby Charlton is survived by his wife, two daughters and grandchildren. It'd be remiss of me not to say a word about a person who may not have played or coached at United, but was a rock and stalwart of someone who did, the late wife of the boss, Sir Alex Ferguson, Lady Cathy Ferguson. The couple were married for 57 years and she was primarily responsible for raising their family and keeping the great man grounded whilst he performed miracles at Aberdeen and then Manchester United. Together they had three sons including Darren who of course played for us in the early 90s. In 2013 after the passing of Lady Cathy's sister, Sir Alex decided it was time to commit the rest of his life to his family. A lot of the success at United that we all enjoyed over the decades can be indirectly given to the gaffer's better half. Lady Cathy leaves behind Sir Alex, her three boys and grandchildren. Let's hope that this time next year the list is far shorter. Rest in peace all and may your memories be a blessing to those who knew you, loved you and admired you.